Hi, this year I attended the Moogfest Engineer Workshop in North Carolina and built the Subharmonicon, the synth you're hearing in the background. You get to hang out with the people who designed it, and after signing a waiver and two four-hour sessions of soldering, screwing, and testing, you get to go home with a brand new synth that you built. Let me take you through the process step by step. So this is the box you get. Everything you need is inside or on the table. And a mere 81 components, 340 solder joints, dozens of washers and nuts, three painful mistakes I made, and calibration, I'm going to have a new synth. So let's get to it. The first big step is installing and soldering the front panel components. This is the front side of the PCB, which tells you what goes where and how the components need to be aligned. And this is the back side, and basically every little round copper joint you see needs to be soldered. What goes where is actually pretty straightforward. Uh, there's a bit of tricky parts with the pots, but the team is on hand at all times to help you understand what goes where. Few tips, it helps to lay out everything in an organized way. It also helps to sit next to someone that was there last year. Once you've identified the components, the next step is a dry fit, which means just plugging them in without any soldering. If you have the equipment, bring fast forward with you. It's a real time saver. Next up, use the front panel to make sure all the components are held in place properly before you start soldering. Then flip the panel over and use the chassis as a holder. Now's where the soldering part starts, so if you haven't learned to do it before the workshop, this would be a great time for some help. Is you want to choose, you want to apply the heat, and then you put the solder and draw, draw it around. Okay. okay, so come in from one end, then you yeah. can right a little bit. Yeah, and then apply the solder. Apply the solder from the other end. First on the tip. Oh, on the tip of the... Yes, yeah, so you get it flowing, and then you let, and then you bring the solder around. So what you want to do is don't be afraid oh. to apply pressure and, and heat and then let the solder, the solder do the work. And with that, I'm off. Now, part one of the soldering is soldering just a single joint for every component. The reason is it's much harder to go back if you solder all the legs. And you want to make sure everything is aligned properly before you go ahead and complete all the soldering. And if you're comfortable that everything is aligned, you can go ahead and solder the rest of the joints. By the way, these fumes are toxic. There's a fan they give you. Make sure it's pulling all the air away. And see, it's as easy as one, two, and 340 joints later comes inspection. And after initial inspection comes testing. Smoke. Yeah, so no smoke is a good sign, but like I said, I made a few mistakes. trigger button 90 degrees off. So that was mistake number one. This is mistake number two. See these two legs right here? The solder is connecting them and short circuiting them, which was causing one of the knobs in the mixer for VCO2, one of the subs, not to work well. So those were pretty easy to fix. And then we're off to calibration. This is Steve Dunnington, the guy behind the Subharmonicon project. Uh, it goes, it's showing you the new value and then with their sharper flats. It's in, it's, Daddy was the Voyager oscillator. Um, actually, zero volts is E. Analog oscillators are never perfect, all the way perfect. They're very close to perfect in some cases, but they do move around, and that's just part of what they do. And in order to do, get it right there, 
increase the gain of this little pot right here. So now with the calibration of the clock. So it's a VCO, so it needs calibration too. Is it the same VCO as these guys? It's the same ports, sort of. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's actually a sawtooth port, oh. and uh, which is silly, but it's funny to do a clock that way. I just do it that way. It's just, I like I like a clock that has an exponentiator circuit driving it. I think there's I think exponentiator circuits have a special thing going on. Thing and that was Bob's great. Uh, well, the thing he pat patented is the filter also a one bolt clock. Uh, the filter is not, it's not temperature compensated, so we don't, we don't try and be pers that precise. So it may or may not. Yeah. It may yeah. or may not that, be. Yeah, that one, that one is, you get, your mileage may vary. But you can make it a volt per octave. With, with a VCA, right? Yeah, or a VCA yeah. or, or attenuator. an attenuator, yeah. yeah. So, once you pass calibration, it's time to fasten the front panel. Before that, there are washers that fill in the space between the switches in the panel and light guides to guide the light to the panel from the PCB. And then it's washer and nut time. So I'm almost done, but remember I said three mistakes? So this is the painful part. Now they do warn you and tell you not to over tighten the nuts. But unfortunately, and I don't have it on camera, and that's a good thing because you don't want to see a grown man cry. Unfortunately, I over tightened one of the nuts on one of the switches and that switch broke. Which means unscrewing all the nuts, taking out all the washers, removing the switch, and soldering a new one in. So don't be like me. Don't over tighten your nuts. Yeah, so with that part over, uh, connect the uh, power strip. Slide in the little rail thingies. I think that's the official name. Tighten the screws. Not too much, remember. Slide in the knobs. For some reason, I had the most fun doing this. Very satisfying. Screw in the wooden panels. And ta-da! You're done. But wait, there are actually two more little things. The first is you get an official serial number from Steve. And the second is a nice little tradition that because all the synths are recently calibrated and tuned, everybody plays the same note in a beautiful unison of 30 or some sub harmonicons. Now that's what I call a super song.